all! So this video has been produced by Mr Turner. The idea behind it is to look at how we represent forces. Uh, all the information that's about to be given is to support you in understanding the rest of the video. So look at the key terms and the definitions that have been given to you and in a moment the examples will begin. So let's look at two examples to show the difference between scalars and vectors using those more tricky ones where there's a scalar version, if you like, and a vector version. I've just said that distance is a scalar and displacement is a vector, but it's really similar to distance. It just has a direction as well. So for example, if I start at a position A, do some journey to B, I could have travelled a distance of 25 kilometres, which is a distance. Now the displacement, the vector version, just looks at the distance from A to B, which might be less, say 12 kilometres, so we have a magnitude, which is the size, 12 kilometers, and the direction, which is southeast, given by this arrow. Another example is speed, which is a scalar, and velocity, which is a vector. So let's take someone who's whirling around a stone on a bit of string. And it's going round, and round, and round, and round. Now let's say that the circumference, so the distance traveled, by the stone is 10 meters in three seconds, quite slow. That's gonna be a speed of 10 meters in three seconds, which is 3.3 meters per second for the speed. If we just take this particular instant of where the stone is right now, you can see that the stone is actually this very, very instant is actually traveling down. It is at 3.3 meters per second, but now I've put a direction, it turns it into a vector. So the vector for velocity will be 3.3 meters per second down. So I've given the direction, showing it by an arrow. That is how you show vectors. If we were here at that very instant when the stone is getting whirled round and round and round, then it would be a different vector. It would be 3.3 meters per second going to the left. Now, what's important here as well is we use scale drawings. So I've tried to look, so it's a bit rough, but I've tried to show that it's the same speed because the arrows are the same. And if you're doing a scale diagram, then and you want to be really careful, then we'll do it with a, a ruler. Okay, so we're looking at vectors and forces are a vector. And the specific question that we're looking at is how do we represent and combine forces? So let's take an object and we're told that it's being pulled five newtons to the right. How would we represent that? Here's our object and I'm going to use the squares on the paper for my scale. And I say that one square is worth one newton. Put my arrowhead to give the direction. Five newtons is the magnitude and a label to say that it's being pulled. Take another example. So this time we've got an object of 30 newtons. How are we going to go about dealing with this one? Let's take random shape object this time. This time instead of using the squares, I'm going to use the centimeters uh, divisions on the ruler. I'm going to say that one centimeter is 10 newtons. So that'll be 
10, 20, 30 newtons. And you notice we've put the arrow down because I'm inferring that the weight means that the object has got that force of gravity on it, so the force of weight is down. That direction is being implied through the word weight. 30 newtons, direction is down, and I've got the label. So then if we come to this idea of combining forces, and this is where the diagrams really do come into their own, and it's important to um, use a scale, because let's say that this object here is on a desk and it's being pulled along the desk. So there is friction at that surface. So I'm going to put a force. Let's say that there's a force of two newtons and I'm using the same scale, one newton per square. I've got my two newton of friction and that's going to oppose the motion. So if it's being pulled in this direction, friction is going to go there. Okay. So then how do I combine that? And you've probably already worked it out, but when we combine forces, what we're doing is we are representing two or more forces as a single force. And we call that the resultant force. And it's really easy when the forces um, or the vectors are in the same plane. And that means that they're in the same line of action. So we've got five newtons pulling it this way, two newtons of friction that way, so overall, there's going to be a resultant force of 3 newtons to the right. We call it the resultant force. That single force, so the combined, combining the forces give a single force, which we call the resultant force. Same for this example, if we extend it, so we're going to say there's 30 newtons of drag. So this object is falling through the atmosphere and... It's got 30 newtons of weight towards the Earth and 30 newtons of drag. So again, using the same scale, I can see that it's really helpful to visualize what's happening. And the equivalent resultant force of my object, I've got 30 newtons down and then drag of 30 newtons up. Actually, there is zero newtons resultant force. And that actually leads us on to the next uh, part of this video which is balanced forces and unbalanced and as we read on in the chapter that is uh, something we're going to learn more about and a balanced force is when the resultant force is zero because they effectively cancel each other out and an unbalanced force is when the resultant force is some value greater than zero and you've got a direction as well so you will have a resultant force if there are unbalanced forces. Okay guys, that's the end of this part of the video. We've got part two forces, which is going to address the rest of the combined forces topic.